which guaranteed black Americans the right to vote. And uh, not one party, Republican or Democrat, lifted a finger to make that a reality. Yeah, uh, that was uh, that was certainly a one of the, the worst uh, national hypocrisies, uh, certainly for for decades and decades. Bruce Eberly with us uh, this evening, uh, the co-author of the book Coming Home, How Black Americans Will Re-Elect Trump. And as uh, we have noted, that doesn't mean that uh, the president would need to take uh, certainly not a majority. No one would predict that. But let, let's say that uh, those those uh, approval uh, numbers, 33, 34 percent of the range that I've seen, if you got half of that, that would that would something no no Democratic nominee could withstand losing that much of a minority vote. We have a call from Doc in uh, Wilmington, Delaware, uh, to join us this evening. Hello, Doc. Thanks as always for a fascinating show. We're taking my comments with hand. Thank you. I'd like to preface my comments by saying I'm a white ethnic American of Eastern European heritage, and my people voted Democratic under Franklin Delano Roosevelt and onward, except under Richard Nixon in '68 and '72 when he courted their votes. They've never looked back. Because of the anti-communist issue, of course, Eastern Europe, they voted Republican ever since. The Republicans have courted their vote. If it can work for them, it can work for the African-Americans in this country. If they are courted actively, if their policies are supporting them, as President Trump is doing in getting the black vote, in sentencing for black folks, jobs for black folks in the African-American neighborhoods of our country, of our country, I believe he can get part of that vote. I'd like you guys to comment, please. And I believe that if President Trump's policies are taken by the Republican Party at large after he leaves... The Republican Party carts that vote. Obviously, the Republican Party in future to get a greater percentage of the black vote. Your well, let's, comment, let's let our guest uh, comment about that. Uh, uh, of course, uh, there are many people who have said uh, that the Democrats take uh, the black vote for granted, and I wouldn't disagree. Your thoughts? Well, you know, it's interesting because Doc really hit it on the head. Because after 1964, the Republicans quit communicating with black voters. It's interesting that, that black Americans are unique in that they still have certain things that make them look like immigrants. And by, when I say that, I mean that there are radio stations and TV stations and TV networks that cater only to black Americans. And there are so-called black newspapers. And for 50 years since the Goldwater debacle, only Democrats have been communicating with black voters. They've been ignored. In fact, they got really bad advice from Washington, D.C. political consultants who suggested to conservative Republicans that don't go after the black vote, because if you do, you'll simply raise the turnout and you'll lose worse than you already are. So uh, he hit it right on the head. And when you haven't heard from a party for 50 years, then you're only hearing from the Democratic Party. And the Democratic Party is saying every Republican is a racist. What you create and what we believe was created was a total lack of any brand or any bond of trust with black Americans. It was completely destroyed by this one-sided communication. But when you start communicating with black Americans over their own medium, uh, some 62 percent of black Americans, for instance, listen to uh, urban contemporary radio stations, black radio stations each week. That's very unusual. In that medium, you can reach the, exactly the right uh, group of uh, black Americans who are open to hearing about the message. Because, it, because, in fact, for over 30 years, polls have shown that th- approximately 30 percent of black Americans are as conservative as conservative white Americans. Now, now we should note uh, also something when we talk about conservatism. I don't know of a more socially conservative group in the country than the group that I would characterize as the uh, – AME church uh, little old ladies. Uh, these are, are people who have a, a, a view of, of morality and behavior that uh, is pretty stern. I mean, and, and they certainly, in terms of, of, of social conservatism, defy that uh, stereotype of the, the liberal black voter. You're absolutely right. And uh, the heart, of course, of the black community, according to Vernon, and I understand that, is the church. Now, it's not that every church is going to be as conservative. Black Americans are no different than white Americans. They're liberals, they're conservatives in their outlook socially and culturally, too. Uh, But among the especially evangelical black churches, they are very conservative, so conservative that uh, Vernon actually heads up a group called Black Americans to Reelect the President. And he's put out over 700,000 brochures comparing where Democrats really stand on the issues. 
because there's this great divergence between uh, where black, what black Americans believe and the values they hold and the values of the Democratic Party and uh, the what they want to accomplish. And, and jobs so they, matter. Let's let's talk about the economy yeah, right. very briefly before we have to go to the break. That matters. I mean, given the numbers that we have seen, I doubt that there's an African American family in the country that doesn't know somebody that uh, that didn't have a job who's gotten one. I mean, this this has an impact on people. Absolutely. Uh, you the, way beyond the news media itself. A reality on the ground has a huge impact. And when you have the lowest uh, black unemployment rate in decades and you have uh, wages rising for the first time in many years, they notice it, as anybody would. More to come, one 866 jimbo one 866 505 That's quite a claim in that subtitle of the book, Coming Home, How Black Americans Will Re-Elect Trump. one 866 jimbo back in a moment. Welcome back to the Jimbo Hannon Show at one 866 jimbo one 866 as we talk with Bruce Eberly. He is the co-author of the book Coming Home. It is published by Humanex Books, and it's subtitled How Black Americans Will Re-Elect Trump. And uh, this is uh, something that I'm sure is of uh, keen interest to the professionals of both parties. Let's uh, talk to Tim in Medford, Wisconsin up next. And uh, good evening, Tim. Good evening, Jimbo. My question is, how much of a factor will the Internet be as far as the affecting the African-American vote possibly going to Trump? I mean, you've got social media, Facebook, the walkaway movement. That's that's something that's making our elections uh, harder to measure by the the old standards of the past. And I'm wondering if that's going to have an effect in terms of giving this high turnout that your guest is predicting. All right. All right. What about that, uh, Mr. Everly? Well, you know, in the 2016 campaign, in fact, uh, Brad Parscale was uh, very effective at uh, using the Internet to reach out to black voters and to tell them exactly uh, where Hillary Clinton stood on some things and what she said about them as some of their young men being super predators. So the, the Internet was used at that time also. I'm not personally privy to what the... Uh, Trump campaign has planned for 2020, but also super PACs uh, like the uh, 2016 committee, America's PAC, uh, and others uh, were active on the uh, uh, on Facebook and other uh, social medium, uh, sh- spreading the, out the word. But the key really is to be able to communicate on no matter, regardless of what the medium is, to be able to communicate and. Um, You know, even today, uh, you hear black leaders, I mean, I'm sorry, Democratic Party leaders saying this can't happen. It sounds exactly like what the Republicans said in 1932 and 1936, and uh, they poo-poo it. In fact, but Van Jones, who I may disagree with on uh, issues, is very smart because he understands. And he and another writer for The Washington Post, whose name I cannot remember, uh, Van Jones said, beware, Democrats, this is a shot fired across our bow because Trump is coming after the black voters and he doesn't need 50 percent. All he needs is a small margin of black voters and we lose. And I paraphrase that. That's not a direct yeah, quote. But uh, that that uh, does certainly sound, uh, yes, uh, very much. So he, yeah. Yeah, he understands that it doesn't take a huge number of votes. And what most people don't understand is that a poll was taken uh, four days before the general election in Pennsylvania. And this was taken by uh, the official Trump campaign. And we happened to get a copy of that poll. And that poll showed just four days before that election that Trump was going to win 21 percent of the black vote in Pennsylvania. Now, there's a plus or minus margin of error on that. But nevertheless, uh, it certainly appears by all even making it the worst case scenario that if that is true, that the black voters in Pennsylvania provide his margin of victory in that state and therefore 
it was a, a major stepping stone to the White House. Oh, yeah. He couldn't have won without Pennsylvania, certainly. Here's Jeff in Abington, Illinois. Good evening, Jeff. Yeah, good evening, Jimbo. Good evening to your guest. Uh-huh. Uh, Thank you. I was raised around uh, both blacks all my life when I was a kid, and all they wanted was a fair shake like the rest of us. So, you know, uh, they vote the way we do. You know, they ain't stupid. They see what things are going on. Well, certainly for many years, of course, they, they uh, have uh, felt the, the promise of, uh, of uh, I suppose, uh, for one thing, most of most black leaders have, have tended to be uh, of African American heritage, and and uh, uh, it would be easy to simply say, well, they should know. Uh, to to what extent? Uh, well, let me put it this way: What do you think it is, Bruce Eberly, that 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 finally got a lot of uh, black voters to say? You know, we've we've been taken for a ride here. I mean, look look at the guy who delivered. I mean, if everybody calls him a racist, well, I, I'll tell you this much: uh, my brother-in-law's working, and he wasn't uh, through eight years of Barack Obama. I mean, there are people saying stuff like that, and I'm, I'm wondering uh, what was the, uh, the the turnaround that, that, that got a lot of people saying, you know, that old habit that's been in our family now for a couple of generations that's that's coming to an end. Well, I like to say that this movement is uh, partly organic and partly encouraged. And by that organic part, I mean that there just comes a tipping point at which I think you say this crying wolf and accusing Republicans, all Republicans, of being racist, it just doesn't match up with what uh, the reality is. And and more than that, uh, all the broken promises of the Democratic Party simply have caused so many to be disappointed, uh, like Candace Owens and and others who have been very outspoken, of course. Uh, but And then the, the encouraged part of it is the fact that uh, for now a few years, and especially in the 2016 campaign, uh, there have been a number of organizations reaching out to black voters uh, over the uh, r- airwaves, radio again, especially because that's a good medium to reach, but also through uh, BET. And uh, those those were carefully measured. And in each case, we could see an increase uh, in the black vote. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's a combination of things. It's impossible to know that this how big this migration is. It's uh, equally impossible to say there is no migration because, like I, as I said earlier, uh, 50 or years ago or 40 years ago, there were virtually no blacks, uh, conservatives or black Republicans. And today, uh, there's a great number. And Jason Riley, by the way, pointed out something of interest in the Wall Street Journal. He said that Donald Trump came into the campaign in 2016 with an advantage that no other Republican had ever had because his show The Apprentice was more popular among, uh, uh, among black viewers than it was among white viewers. And so he had a very positive image, and uh, that gave him a leg up in being able to speak to the black community. More to come. Stay with us. one 866 jimbo is our number, one 866 Bruce Eberly is the president and founder of Eberly Communications Group, and along with Vernon Robinson III, a conservative political act- activist and former captain in the U.S. Air Force and former city council member in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, back in a moment. 866-50-JIMBO, 1-866-505-4626. Bruce Eberly is the founder and president of Eberly Communications Group and the co-author of the book Coming Home, How Black Americans Will Re-Elect Trump. Interesting concept, and again, something that uh, those uh, naysayers, I think, on both sides are beginning to say, hmm, That might actually happen. This is Lisa, who calls in from Silver Spring, Maryland. Good evening, Lisa. Hi. um, Your guest said there are a lot of conservative old women in the AME church. I'm actually a member, and I don't know where these conservative old ladies are. You'll notice, first of all, I'm the one who said it, and secondly, I was speaking in terms of socially conservative. I'm talking about people who who adhere to traditional values. I'm wondering if he is familiar with the statements that have been issued by the AME church. 